G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Flashlight Crazy. Today I'm reviewing the Zebra Lights 18650s, the SC64 and SC65, LE and HI. Let's check them out. All right, before we have a look at the lights, we'll just have a look at the boxes. So here, as you can see, SC64C, LE, SC65C, HI. So HI, LE, and we'll go over the small differences shortly. But in the box, you're going to get a manual with the lights operation and safety instructions, and oh, you'll get some O-rings, okay? All right, so here are the two lights and I'll just, I'm gonna install the batteries, but I'm gonna show you that they can actually use a protected cell. So a lot of people think that they can only use the unprotected 18650s. Well, if you can find, which is very rare, but if you can find a protected uh, flat top 18650, that will work. So let me demonstrate. If you open the light from the tail end there, and just if you can see, hang on, I'll grab a light to show you. But if you can see down there, uh, that is actually potted. So that is a, uh, there's potting down there, meaning that the electronics are all protected from, you know, big impacts and uh, shakes and, and water and all that sort of stuff. So very, very secure uh, electronics. Now, this is a protected Army Tech 18650, it says here, safety vent with thermal cutoff protection. So it's a protected cell. And it goes in, and as I will show right now, this light's gonna work fine. There we go. So if you prefer protected cells, you can get them. The only flat top protected cells I know of are from Army Tech, so you'd probably have to buy them from Army Tech. This one is an INR Molly cell. 18650. So I think this is maybe what they come with. Uh, could be wrong, but that's my guess. Anyway, and of course that works too. Okay, so now there's some there's some cool history here with these two. So the uh, SC64CLE came out first, and you know look at you know revolutionary light. And what I mean by that is. It is tiny for an 18650. You guys saw, I just put an 18650 cell in this light. And if I stand it next to a Raylite LAN apple, look at that. The Raylite LAN apple is taller. <laughs> wow. And the Raylite LAN apple is, uh, it houses a 14500. This houses an 18650. Incredible. So Zebra Light have, in my opinion, perfected the art of a compact 18650 EDC light, right? So now back to what I was saying. So the, the LE came out first and it's great and everything and, you know, screwed it, screwed pocket clip for just perfect uh, tensile strength and, and obviously pocketing experience and, and comfort and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, it, it's got this um, emitter in it that I believe is a uh, 519A, but I could be wrong. It could be a 219C or it might not even be a Nietzsche, but I'm pretty sure it is a Nietzsche. Anyway, and what a lot of people were saying was that they didn't like the, um, the, the, color temperature or the tint or the, the CRI or something like that. And so Zebra Light went away and came back with the HI, which is this one with a different emitter and see, and if I just get them back to similar outputs, so see the, the difference there. So you know, oh, it doesn't work on the blue, but see the difference here. You've got, you've got a, a much nicer, like rosier tint over here. Uh, whereas this one's got that yellow tint that uh, a lot of 519As have. I'm pretty sure it's a 519A. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so so that was one of the other things. Um, so that was the first thing, sorry, that they changed was the, was the emitter. But one of the reasons why they changed the emitter, not only for the tint, but also for the throw. Because see how that emitter is domeless? So that's going to throw more. It's going to have a more punchier hotspot than that. That's going to... This is kind of like a, uh, a really good... Uh, mixed beam profile because it's going to have a really, really wide hotspot. See that? The hotspot just grows, whereas this one's got a much punchier hotspot and, in my opinion, a better tint as well. So these lights are 
both of them are as good as e each other. I don't have a problem with with the tint or anything like that. I don't have a problem with the um, mixed beam profile in the in the LE. Uh, I do prefer the throw and the the more punchier hotspot in the HI. But again, either of them are fine for me. Uh, that they re it's, it doesn't worry me. They're both such phenomenal lights. And I was going to review them separately, and I just thought, no, I'll just chuck them on the channel. Uh, together because they're they're basically the same light just with a few very very minor differences uh basically the um the emitter to be honest i don't really oh actually there is a, a small difference in size and and i'll zoom in so you can see that but look at that this this the the upgraded one is like two mil shorter than the uh than the older one so and their faces are the same tails are the same but yeah it's just it's slightly shorter that's literally all it is so it's pr it's pretty phenomenal but the pocket clips are the same everything else is the same it's just that uh it's somewhat shorter and it's got an upgraded emitter which which i do prefer but some people may prefer this emitter and and i'll do the night shots some people may prefer this because it's got a better uh evenly spread beam profile whereas you know this is more of a hot spot and spill it does you know come into a bit of a bit of a what would you call that a, sh a shadowy hot spot but it, it is still um it is still a a hot spot and spill light when compared to something like this which is very very mixed beam uh because of the the style of emitter now both of them have the same uh reflectors there they have orange peeled reflectors they have the exact same heat sinks all around the head there they have a beautiful finish on the on the body. You know, the, the finish on it is just beautiful. And as I said, the pocket clip is screwed in, so it's not going anywhere. Obviously, they both tail stand. I mean, it's EDC perfection, this light. And so comfortable to hold. I mean, look at that. So they bury into your palm. You can really, really secure them in there. Your thumb falls so naturally on the side switch. And those side switches are kind of recessed. See how recessed they are? Now, I've read that some people have complained about accidentally turning this on. I can't imagine how they've done that. I can't imagine how, how, they've, how they've accidentally turned it on because this is a recessed switch. I mean, up against your, your thigh in your pocket, how are you going to turn that on unless you've got it in there with keys or something and one of the keys hits it? But the, the perfection of this switch is such that your thumb needs to really like get in there, you know? And so I, I don't see how it can how it can accidentally turn on. And I'm not saying that people are lying or whatever. I'm just kind of saying like, that seems difficult for, for, for that to happen. Uh, but anyway, so let's check out the weights between them, both with the 18650s in there. And of course, 18650s can vary in weight depending on charge and style and all that sort of stuff. So... The HI is 85.73 grams. The LE is 87.21 grams. And the HI is the newer version that's slightly smaller. Maybe that has something to do with the uh, reduction in weight as well. Who knows? And uh, this is where these lights are just incredible. So, okay, the HI is just shy of nine centimeters, under nine centimeters for an 18650 light. You're kidding me. And um, the LE is just over nine centimeters. So yeah, there's about two millimeters difference in these two lights in the length. And now let's just get that there. Okay, so face width for the LE is 24.61 mil, that is. And for the HI, 24.56, so basically the same. Body, 21.17, tail, 24.14. That was for the HI. And then LE, body, 21.12, 24.17. So it looks to me, because these things can be out by a couple of mil here or there, depending on how you hold them or whatever. Um, it looks to me as though the HI and the LE are identical in uh, width all the way around, but the height is slightly different, and then, of course, the emitter is slightly different. Now, the coolest things about these lights as well is the programmability and the user interface, because from off, you literally have uh, instant access to three modes when you are in mode group seven. 
So how do you get to mode group seven is from off, you literally just click the, the light seven times. Then what happens is you are in uh, a, a three mode group option base. So what that means is from off, if I press and hold, it gets me to moonlight mode, okay? And moonlight mode has two modes. From moonlight mode, I double click, go up, double click again, go down. Awesome moonlight mode, single click, off. Okay, so from off, press and hold, moonlight mode. From off again, single click, gets to another mode group. And if I double click, it can go down or up, okay? Single click, turn off, awesome. From off again, if I double click, bang, turbo, and double click from there, goes down or up or whatever, I've got this set to it, doesn't really change much. I've got this set to it, does. Single click off. So double click gets you to, to high or to one mode group. Single click gets you to another mode group. Press and hold gets you to another mode group. But the thing is, you can customize those mode groups. So let me just show you what I mean with this, with uh, moonlight mode. Let's say, okay, so press and hold gets you to moonlight mode. And let's say I really like that one, but if I double click and I want that one to be a bit higher just in case I need more light, okay? So I leave it on that. And what I do is I double click six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's ready to change. How do I know that? One, two, three. It steps. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm all the way down. So now one, two, one, two, one, two. So double click raises it. Triple click reduces it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, then single click, turns it off, saves it. It is that simple. So when you're on a particular output, if you wanna change it, I'll change it with this one now, okay? So if you wanna change it, you double click six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to do it quickly though, okay? Now, if I triple click, one, two, three, it's gonna go down. If I double click, one, two, it goes up. One, two, up, triple click, one, two, three, down. When you like the output you're on, click, turn it off, saves, done. So, extremely customizable. Now, what I'm pretty sure of is that you can only customize one of the outputs in each mode group. So double click gets you to turbo. You can customize one of these outputs. It's either this one or this one. I don't know which one, but you'll learn that pretty quickly when you do the six double taps. Single click, turn it off. Same with the medium, single click. You can customize one of these. I don't know which one, but one of them. And same with the moonlight mode as well. You can, whoa. Okay, so uh, now what happened there was uh, what I tried to do is I tried to get it on moonlight mode, but I didn't hold it down for long enough. And when I took it off, it, it registered a double click. So these switches are very, very sensitive and very, very, when I say sensitive, they're not forward clickies, like you've got to press down, but they register things uh, you've got to be very careful with your timing. Otherwise, they register things that you may not have intended on doing. That's all. Moving on from the UI, because I think the UI is perfect. I really do. And, and let's just clarify for a second, in case I wasn't very, very clear. Three, three different mode groups, instant from off. Incredible. Moonlight mode, turn it off. Regular mode, turn it off. Turbo, turn it off. Unbelievable for an EDC light in 18650, amazing. But now taking a look at the back end of them, I know I've spoken about the screwed in pocket clips, but let's see how deep carry they'll be. So not amazingly deep carry, but for me, well and truly enough, right? So these pocket clips are screwed in to this ring here. They're not going anywhere and they are extremely strong. And so they're gonna hold these things in your pocket as long as you want. These lights are tough as nails and they are, as I said, potted. So they'll survive drops, they'll survive dings, they'll survive water, all that sort of stuff. They do get rather warm on turbo, uh, but not dangerously warm. They just do get warm because they're a small, small light and a small head. And so they don't boast you know, a crazy amount of lumens, but as an EDC light, they're perfect because when it's dark, this thing lights up the way for you without a doubt. 
All right, let's go out to the night shots and see how they go, and then we'll come back for some final thoughts and prices on the uh, Zebra Light SC64 CLE and SC65 CHI. See you in a sec. All right, so that's on full blast. This is the uh, HI version. So this is going to have a larger hotspot. on the highest output very bloody useful and then I'll just get you to my moonlight mode which is just I mean look at that ha what a moonlight mode and now the medium mode that I've got it on just for the real small jobs look at that beautiful stunning light zebras mate they make good lights tried and true All right, now I'll get the uh, LE. Ah, so it's the LE with the larger hotspot. My mistake. Yeah, the LE's got the larger hotspot. So double click to turbo. Yeah, so that's the LE. Not much of a difference except the distance. I'll go back to the uh, HI, the high, but the LE's got a more evenly spread beam. I think it might even put out more light, I don't know. But the uh, high will go a bit further because it's got a tighter hotspot. So this is the one with the larger hotspot, yeah. My mistake, guys, I'm only human. And then that's the medium or that I've set it on because as you know, you can set this to pretty much bloody anything. And then I've got the same moonlight mode, just bloody splendid. All right, I'll go back. There it is. Yep, so that's got more throw. Tighter hotspot, more throw. Definitely. All right, see ya. So that's the uh, high, just to let you know. All right, see ya. All right, so the night shots are pretty telling, I guess, in terms of like what beam you'd prefer. So now I want to make sure I don't stuff it up. Okay, so the HI is the more throwier and the LE is more of an even even spread. Okay, so when you see, because I think I stuffed it up in the, in the video for a moment there, I apologize about that. So when you, if you're someone who prefers uh, a more of a mixed beam profile, a larger hotspot with more light going from the hotspot into the spill a lot sooner. When I say sooner, I mean in closer distance, okay? Then you're going to want the LE this one. If you're someone who is like they, how they call it, like a tint snob, you know, you don't want that yellowish tint, you'd prefer the kind of rosier tint, and which is me, I like rosy tints, don't, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with being a tint snob. And if you want a tighter hot spot with a little bit more throw, then the HI is going to be for you. Now you could buy both. I think they're about a hundred US dollars uh, from Zebralite. Unfortunately for us down here in Australia, Zebralite does not post to Australia but you can use a proxy address with someone you know in the US, or you can use, I think, like a MyUS account or something like that. There are ways to get them. But uh, in, in terms of, you know, the only thing that's really gonna set these apart in terms of a decision between one or the other, you know, if you're looking at them on the online and you're thinking, which one am I going to choose and why? Just know that the LE is gonna give you that yellow tint with a larger hotspot and more light going from the hotspot into the spill at a closer distance. The HI is gonna give you that rosier tint, it's gonna give you a smaller, more punchier hotspot, and the light is not gonna transition into the spill as soon, in, in uh, and what I mean is as close. It's gonna wait for, for a bit further, a bit more distance, before that hotspot blends into the spill a bit better. But both of them are going to have the, the same amount of spill, a lot of light, same programmability, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it does just depend on, I guess, your tint preferences and your beam profile preferences. Because I know a lot of people who prefer a much larger hotspot for, for close-up. And to be honest, that is more practical. For close f close encounters and, and close-up jobs and stuff like that, a, a larger hotspot with a more mixed beam profile is much more practical than a hotspot and spill. Because 
you, you're moving the light around more with a hot spot filter to kind of get it to where you want it. Whereas mixed beam, you kind of just shine it in the general direction and it gives you heaps of light. So look, I hope that was helpful. I, I'm an amateur reviewer, but I guess that, uh, you know, I've, I've said what I can about these lights and I hope it's helpful for anyone if you're kind of tossing up which one to get. They're great lights. They're really robust. 18650 in the, you know, in something that's as long as your finger or smaller even than your finger. It's just incredible. Well done, Zebra Light. Uh, and look, I think that's it, guys. So I'll link them at Zebralite. And if I can find any Aussie retailers, authorized retailers in Australia that sell them, I'll link them too, but I don't think I can. So uh, I'll just link, link Zebralite. And if we're lucky, I'll find an authorized dealer in Australia, but I don't think there is. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. And until next time, stay cool and stay safe. See ya.